if you work in recovery at all from a cath lab, so this could be on the floor in a cardiac unit, this could be kind of a post-op right outside of the cath lab. Sometimes cath labs staff their own post-op, sometimes the post-procedure area is completely different. Then this is for you. So I'm, these are not all of the complications that could happen, but they're the ones that you really wanna look out for if you're caring for these patients. And some of these are very rare, so keep that in mind, but I would rather address it than not address it at all. So the first one we're gonna start with because it's probably the most common access that is being used is radial access. So maybe if you understand a little bit about what your patient kind of went through, you understand what to look out for. So the heart is what we are looking at. I'm gonna talk specifically about left heart caths, which is an arterial access. Right heart caths are a completely different subject. So a left heart cath, so they were going to get their coronary arteries assessed because they have coronary artery disease, they're having chest pain, something like that. Um, or they needed to get their aortic valve assessed because they have aortic stenosis or are being worked up for aortic stenosis or even mitral regurge. We'll kind of see all of that here. You had a patient who had a left heart cath through radial access. That means we went through the radial artery, the artery closest to the thumb in the wrist, and a catheter goes up and around the aortic arch, and then your coronary arteries are here, or we cross into the left ventricle that way. So think of everything that it kind of passed through. Obviously you can have access related complications in the arm and that's usually directly related to the band that they have on that you should receive the patient with because we don't really do these manual type pulls for radial, we do use those little bracelets. So you can have bleeding kind of in this area and you would see sometimes but not always swelling for that like a hematoma you could have ischemia to the hand kind of distally but the other things you want to pay attention to are what it went through on the way there and this is where the stroke complication kind of comes from is it's because our catheter catheters and wires are passing over the aortic arch and kind of have to come back through it so if there was some plaque here some atherosclerotic material us Putting our equipment over this a couple of different times could embolize something into the carotids and that's where you get a stroke. And that's usually gonna present post-procedure. The other thing, and this is regardless of the type of access that is being used, is we're using contrast to be able to visualize. So like when your patient goes for a CT scan, those types of things, we are injecting contrast. So you, and we give different medications, right? We give sedation for radial access. We give usually a combination of well, lidocaine for numbing, and then nitro, verapamil, and or sometimes a low dose heparin. Allergic reaction can absolutely occur from any of those, but a common allergy is a contrast related allergy. And that would present usually when the case is completely over and they're out in post care. And you would, depending on the severity, right, you could see hives and those sorts of things, um, breathing difficulties, tachycardia. So you want to pay attention to that. The other thing is we could have a dissection, so a tear in any of these vessels because we passed through them. Anytime you're introducing equipment into the body, you have that risk. You also have the thrombus risk, so you could have a stroke from a thrombus because once, once you put foreign objects in the body, you could have that complication because the body attacks it, tries to aggregate platelets and those types of things, and you have that thrombus development. It's not only occurring when we're doing coronary intervention, it's more likely to occur then, but it can occur during any of the procedures. So that's something important to pay attention for radial access. And this could be both a right or a left radial access, so either or. The next one, not as common anymore, but definitely is for more complex procedures where we need larger access because the radial is so much smaller than the femoral artery, is femoral access. So femoral access is in the groin, so you have the femoral artery, the iliacs, and then it goes to the aorta, and we would go up and around the aortic arch and root, and then again, the coronary arteries are there, or we cross the aortic valve and go into the left ventricle. Same thing, right? You have the carotids up here attached to the arch, so we're going up and over here. Stroke is definitely still a concern. A section, of course, in the aorta or in the iliacs or femoral artery. And then you have the femoral arterial complications in themselves, hematoma, pseudoaneurysm, AV fistula. Another 
kind of thing that can happen is if you are not properly flushing sheaths as in fully aspirating and wasting onto a gauze to check for clot that is probably inside of the sheath because there's stagnant blood there then if you just let's say pulled a little bit of saline and then injected the rest well where does that clot go it doesn't go up here right artery arterial blood flow goes away from the heart it actually goes down into the leg. So you could have a cold leg complication because everything is connected in the leg to what's up here. So if I had a thrombus right here, I would cut off the rest of this blood flow. If I had it more distally, I would have blood flow to the thigh, but I probably wouldn't have blood flow to the foot. So a cold leg is something to look out for. Make sure you understand sheath management, and if not, have somebody kind of go over it with you and watch you the first couple times that you do it. We have access-related issues in the leg, we have aortic kind of dissection issues, again, rare, but we should go over it, and then stroke-related issues. And of course, here it's a little more um, complicated. We'll go into the actual issues that could happen in the coronary arteries that you should look out for as well. Post-PCI, meaning PCI stands for percutaneous, let's write this out, percutaneous, because the alternative to this is kind of open heart, so percutaneous under the skin, coronary, so the coronary arteries, intervention. And 99.9% .9 of the time, right now, that means that your patient probably got a stent. Um, it's good to ask because we do have some drug-eluting balloons now where you don't always leave a stent behind. Um, sometimes we fixed a very, very small vessel where we can't stent, so it's good to confirm whether or not they received a stent. But a common misconception is that people assume my patient was only fully anticoagulated, so got angiomax or therapeutic heparin, if they were getting a stent. That isn't always true. What if someone tells you they had a negative cath, okay, they did not get a stent, but the patient was anticoagulated. You see they received angiomax, you see they received therapeutic heparin. That's strange, right? Why would we be doing that if we didn't actually fix anything? Well, there are some procedures where, for us, we anticoagulate anytime we put a wire in the coronary arteries. Because remember that coagulation process I talked about? The body kind of freaks out, like, what is this? And starts putting antiplatelets, and by antiplatelets, starts aggregating platelets. Well, sometimes we put wires down to assess things to decide if we need to fix or not, but because we're putting a wire in the coronary artery to assess it, we have to anticoagulate. So that's why your patient might have received anticoagulation. We did the assessment, decided it wasn't worth fixing or it's not actually severe, and it is deemed a negative cath, but they didn't receive a stent. So the scenarios of that would be IFR, FFR, which is a physiology assessment. How I describe it to patients is like a specific stress test for your heart because they know what a stress test feels like. And for some of these, for FFR, we have to give adenosine and it can make the patient feel really bad. And at IFR, you don't have to, but it's the same idea. We put a wire past a lesion. So let's say because I, for some reason, um, colored this yellow, the plaque is going to be gray. So let's say there's a lesion here. We put a wire down, we assess the pressure gradient before and after it, and it'll either be positive or negative, right? So if it's positive, we'll fix it. If it's negative, we'll leave it. But they received angiomax or heparin in order to allow us to put that wire down the coronary. Same thing for IVUS and OCT. This is an IVUS example right here. But here we're just looking. So it's like a camera, okay, like a colonoscopy for the, <laughs> for the coronary arteries. We're looking at the type of plaque morphology. If they have left main disease, we're going to measure the area of the left main to see if it is severe or not. And remember, let's say someone had left main disease, right? They had a really severe left main lesion. We might not be stenting it. It might be positive. They might have severe disease, but they're actually going to go for a bypass consult. But the same idea, we put a wire in the coronary to be able to see that. So they were anticoagulated, but they didn't receive a stent. Now let's talk about if they received a stent, what are some of the things that can happen? Well, but back up for a second. Dissection is a complication that we always want to look out for. It's not always something that we are going to visually see. Sometimes it happens and we tell by symptoms during or after the calf that that's probably what happened. A dissection can happen, just like aortic dissection or a femoral artery dissection, 
without, anti without this whole anticoagulation, putting a wire in the coronary process. So let me explain for a second how that occurred. Remember, in order to take pictures of these coronary arteries, I take a catheter, that is way too small. I take a catheter and I have to engage the coronary artery. This is that catheter that came for the from the radial or the femoral artery in order to inject contrast to be able to see, right? So what happens is sometimes when we put this catheter up against the ostium, again, rare, but can happen and something you need to look out for, we can cause a dissection because there is this point of, of touching, right? And what can happen, what a dissection is, is a small tear in the vessel wall. Your vessel has three layers, the intima, the media, and I'll point this out in a second, the intima, the media, and the adventitia. So when I put that catheter up against the wall, sometimes that sheer pressure can, this is a dramatic example, but it can cause this micro tear. And depending on the direction of it, depending how bad it is, depending if we injected contrast in there by accident, uh, depends whether or not the patient will just kind of heal on their own or if it will become a problem. So in post care, what you're looking for is new onset chest pain. Okay, they didn't, I mean, they might have come in for chest pain, but that doesn't mean they're having chest pain during the cath. But if they're suddenly having chest pain, this is kind of one of the first things you're thinking of. Don't automatically assume well, like, oh, well, if they had a cath, of course they have chest pain. No, that's that's abnormal. And it's good to ask questions. When did it start? Is it getting worse? Um, and call the cardiologist regardless so that they can make that assessment. But the, the worst thing that could happen is this dissection. These are little red blood cells that have drawn our platelets can progress. You start to get blood behind the dissection flap and it starts to coagulate. Now this one, you still have blood flow down the vessel. So your patient's fine. They probably just have some chest pain, but a more uh, severe example of what can happen if it, it isn't addressed and isn't treated is it fully thrombosis off and then you have no blood flow here and that is a STEMI. So you'll start to see those ST elevations on the EKG. Your patient will have chest pain, diaphoretic probably, and that whole gambit. So that can happen from, remember, this initial engagement. So that can happen from a diagnostic heart cath from one that was negative. It can also definitely happen if we intervened. So I think what people really don't realize is when we intervene, and I'm going to turn this over a little bit. This is a stent in a vessel. But in order to get the stent in, we do some work, right? We have to, there we go, uh, we have to balloon and sometimes we use drills like rotablator CSI um, to kind of shear off that and sand down that calcium. But even just inflating a balloon in a vessel that has high plaque burden is in a way causing microdissections on purpose. They're controlled dissections. We stent over them so that they don't have open flaps like this. That's why we don't just balloon. We also stent to keep the vessel open to cover up any of these little things that we caused. But just like when a patient goes for bypass, they have to get a sternotomy, right? You kind of have to break things in order to fix them first to get to them. The same concept here. So yes, when a patient has, PC, has a PCI, has a stent, they might have some chest pain from the work that we did, okay? Like the whole breaking in order to heal, they might have some of that discomfort just like post-surgery patients. But what you're looking for is that should get better, right? As the body kind of heals and gets used to that and is like, oh, okay, we're good, we have good blood flow now and calms down, you should see that trend downward, not upward. If it's trending upward, then you might have an issue like this where it's starting to clot off. Um, or you have a what we would call a stent edge dissection. So sometimes we stent and we try to stent normal and normal. So if the lesion was here, we try to fully cover it. But sometimes we, you know, this is a type of metal at the end of the day. It can cause a little tear right here at the edge of the stent. And then you might start to see this process that we discussed earlier, where you start to get some of that coagulation effect. This little tear, if it, if it doesn't really fully heal, you can kind of get that instant thrombosis, which is what you're looking out for. Now, the obvious thing is going to be that whole ST elevation STEMI process that you're used to, but you really want to catch it early. So, and the early identifiers are going, you're not really always pulling troponins on a patient post cath. You're going to if they start to experience these symptoms. But the early onset thing is going to be talking to your patient and paying attention to them. And if they start to have that discomfort, this should be in the back of your mind. You should go, you know what? I know they had a lot of work done. I know they had a stent. 
I know these things can happen and this chest pain is new. I'm going to notify the physician and, and these are the things that, that should be in the back of your mind of, yeah, we did fix things, but sometimes there are things that happen while we are trying to fix them. So overall, I hope that's helpful. Um, I know there's, I try not to throw too much terminology in there, but what's really important on the cath side is when you're giving report, if we did a lot of work or if we had some type of complication like this, right? We had a, it was actually a negative cath, we caused a dissection, so we stented it. That's important to communicate to post care because they need to know what they're looking out for and how much work was done and if it's expected chest pain or unexpected chest pain if there were any issues, if they're starting to show signs of maybe tachycardia and kind of hypotension, did you have an access related issue and you fixed it, but it could always reoccur. So the person taking care of them next needs to understand that. Or did we just balloon something and we did not actually stent? Did we anticoagulate, but didn't actually fix anything? Explain that we did one of these things, but it still requires anticoagulation because we're in the coronary artery. The more that someone understands who's taking care of the patient, the more they can take ownership in making some of these decisions if they see any sign, early signs of complication. And they're gonna be the ones who see those early signs. By the time they come to the lab, they're probably having full-blown symptoms and ST elevations or it's a full bleed. You want to help them be able to pick up those things before it progresses to that so we have a better chance of being able to fix it. If you work in the cath lab, share this with your pre-post colleagues and make sure to hit the subscribe button. Comment below any questions you might have or directly to reach out to me at Don't Miss a Beat on Instagram or Facebook.